Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tom Grinstead. I'm a product manager on the Google Play team. And in a minute or two's time, we're also going to be joined by Nikos and June as well. Now, the three of us are going to be talking about some powerful new tools and techniques that give you the access to the play data that you need to be able to succeed. We're going to be talking about three critical areas. First, I'm going to be talking about new ways that you can launch with confidence with our new release dashboard that was launched only a month ago. Secondly, Nikos is going to talk about some brand new reports that help you understand your app acquisition and how to really reach the users that you really care about to build your business. And lastly, June will tell you about some of the revamped tools we have to give you generic access into all of that valuable data so you can answer any kind of question no matter what your business is. So let's get started. When we think about releases, we think that it's one of the most important parts of your app's lifespan. Unfortunately, it's also where the largest problems can happen. Nobody wants a bad release, and we have really powerful tools to help you avoid them, like our alpha and beta channels and also stage rollouts. But occasionally, they do happen. Sometimes it's out of your control. Sometimes something slips through the net. Now, when that happens, you want as early warning as possible that it's happened and to be able to take action to minimize the damage, either by pausing your release or by issuing a patch. Now, previously, it was quite difficult to get that kind of insight very quickly, which is why at I.O. we were really happy to announce the brand new release dashboard. The release dashboard pulls together all of the information that you might want to know about the health of one of your releases and puts it all in one easy to reach place so you can judge how it's going. So let's take a look at what it has to offer. To start with, the release dashboard has one of the most important metrics that you're going to care about during your releases, your crash rate. Now, it's worth saying that this crash rate is actually quite different to what we were displaying only a few months ago. It used to be that users could only report crashes when they actually happened, and each time it was an opt-in. Fairly recently, we changed that. Now, during the device setup process, users opt into device cr uh, to uh, crash reporting. This means that we have vastly more crash data for you now than we used to. The crash reports on the release dashboard are much, much more fully realized than we used to have. You might also notice that they're more detailed because they're shown with hourly granularity. All the way through the dashboard, we were very careful to get you the data as quickly as we possibly could and in a much finer granularity. Now, that's just one metric that we have, but there are plenty of others. The second one are ANRs, or application not responding. This is when the Android system reports that your app has frozen for at least five seconds and become unresponsive. It's those really irritating times when your phone's not doing anything. Now, this is obviously really annoying to users and something that you guys should really care about not happening. Again, we're showing many more instances thanks to the new opt-in process. Now, you'll notice at the bottom of this card, we also have the View ANRs link, just like we had the View Crash link on the crash cards. Clicking on this takes you through to our new oh, uh, our crash and ANR reporting, um, which also has all this new data in as well. Here, you can really easily see if you've introduced any new crashes or new ANRs in your latest release. Now, next, we have our reviews. Crashes and ANRs are really good ways to look at your health, but sometimes you're going to make a change that don't show up in those. Maybe you've accidentally disabled a favorite feature, or maybe your app is just running generally more slowly. You normally find out about this through what people say. So we're pulling all of your review scores directly up onto the release dashboard. You can see that the latest release, 3.7.3, is really underperforming compared to, the global, uh, compared to the average of all other releases. When this kind of thing happens, you really want to know what people are saying about it. So we've also pulled up all of those one and two star reviews as well. So you get an instant idea about what users are finding difficult with your new release. Now lastly, we have install and uninstall events. It used to be quite difficult to track how far your update has gone and how updating has progressed. As you can see on the left-hand side, we now make it very easy to tell the difference between updates and brand new releases. Critically, we also apply this logic to uninstalls as well. So for the first time, 
you can see how many people are downloading your app for the first time and then uninstalling, or how many of your existing users are getting the update, having a problem, and then deciding to uninstall, something that I don't think anybody here wants. Now, we were looking at all of those metrics individually just now. But one of the things I really love about the release dashboard is it pulls them all together in one place. Sometimes you'll have a release where the crashes are just slightly higher, but maybe not high enough for you to worry on their own. Maybe review scores are slightly down, but you wouldn't notice it because it's only very slight. The release dash, by pulling everything together, means that you can spot broad trends. Maybe you've just had a release which isn't quite as good as your last one, and users aren't very happy. Now, by pulling everything together, you can make those comparisons. We do a lot of research with developers just like you when we develop these features. And one of the things we heard when we were developing this was that a lot of developers had their gold release. This is a previous release that they really loved, that they thought was the quality bar that they wanted from their apps. Now, after hearing this, we added one last feature that I want to talk about, and that is comparisons. The release dash allows you to select not just all releases, but any one of your previous releases to compare your current one to. It's a really fantastic way to be able to track your progress and to know whether your app is meeting your own standards of quality. As I said, we talked to a lot of people when we were developing these, and here's just one example. Jam City, who was one of our early access partners, found it extremely useful. They really liked being able to compare the difference between their favorite releases, especially their crashes and NRs, and their current one. They also use things like stage rollouts <coughs> and uh, alpha and beta tracks. So if they do see a problem, just like you, they can very rapidly choose to pause a poor, pause a poor release. So in summary, what Release Dash is really built to do is to help all of you have the best releases you can and give you the earliest possible warning if something's going wrong. So you can take whatever action you think is right to try to fix it and give the best possible experience for your users. I'm really happy to say that all of Release Dash is available today. So you can log on to the Play Console, check out your latest release, and we strongly recommend that you go there every single time you make a release to see how it's doing. Thanks very much for listening to me, and I'd like to pass over to Nikos, who's now going to talk to us about acquisition. Thank you, Tom. So now when we think about key points in the app development lifecycle, of course, releasing is one, but you probably care about attracting and retaining the most valuable uh, users. So now, having heard all of this great news and all of these great new features in release management, I am confident that your future releases are going to be successful and that you're going to have an app that you are happy to market to users. Now that your product is live, you need to think about three key questions for your growth strategy. Which marketers are bringing me my most valuable users? Which countries are they coming from? And my, are my install and buy conversion rates good? Now, why are these questions important and how can the Play Console help you answer them? Let me share this with you now. So we engage with developers in a regular basis, and what we hear from you is that you need to know which of your acquisition channels are more effective in acquiring and retaining your most valuable users. So what we hear from you is that you need data to make the right decisions on where to spend your money and your energy optimizing your growth strategies. So you may already know this, but a couple of years ago, we launched the Play Acquisition Report. What this report shows you is how many store listing visions you had over a, visit of, over a period of time, <coughs> how many of them went on to install, buy and buy again from your app. So you can cut this uh, acquisition traffic by five main channels, including the Play Store organic traffic, AdWords campaigns, third-party referrers, Google search, and traffic tagged by UTM. So we've made uh, a couple of very significant improvements over this report, but before I go there, I would like to talk about UTM tag traffic and why you should be using it today. One of the most powerful features of the user acquisition report is reporting on acquisition traffic broken down by UTM tag. So UTM tag lets you identify a link that you use to uh, drive traffic to your Play Store listing. So any links can use these UTM tags. You, the links that you share in social media, adverbs, links in your own website, or even links from other apps if they have a UTM tag. 
So this is really powerful. So you can apply this to any link, and then you can accurately compare the contribution that this link had to your team's, to your app's success and growth. So for example, you can compare uh, how much different advertising campaigns contribute to your app's growth, even if these campaigns are in different uh, advertising networks. So UTM tags are great for tracking uh, planned growth campaigns, but what about organic traffic? Uh, for many apps, uh, traffic from within the Play Store itself is the main driver for acquisition. So to help you manage your business better, we've added an additional breakdown on exactly this traffic, on the Play Store organic traffic. So you can see that traffic broken down by country because we want to help you expand to the two billion Android devices that exist across the world. So with this data, you can see which countries are performing better in terms of store listing visitors, installs, and buyer conversions. And this is a great way to understand unrealized opportunities in new countries. So let me share with you how one of our uh, top partners, Concrete Software, has used this data. So they are a US-based company of about 30 uh, people. And about a year ago, they noticed that uh, their mobile game doesn't have the conversion rate that they would like it to have. So when we launched the country breakdown, they saw a very strong correlation between good conversion rates and cold climate countries. As a result, they started focusing their acquisition campaigns on these countries, doing things like, for example, uh, running an experiment to change their icon from a front-facing icon to a side-facing uh, icon. That led to 25% to increase of installs in these specific <coughs> markets. Mm. So now, uh, Articat and Keith know where their installs are coming from. He knows also where to direct his ad spending, and it is in countries like Canada and Sweden, instead, for example, of Brazil or Indonesia. So one th another thing that you have told us is that even though the user acquisition report is useful to see how your own apps are performing in terms of conversion rate, there is a very big question of what is good. How much opportunity exists to drive acquisition even further? So la late last year, we introduced peer benchmarks. So these benchmarks allow you to see how your conversion rate reports to apps that are similar to yours, meaning apps that are in the same app category and use the same monetization model. So these benchmarks, benchmarks are available on both the acquisition channel view and on the country view. That lets you find out areas for improvement, uh, make cases for further investment, or just simply celebrate your team's success. So let me show you another example of how this data is used to grow your business. So EA, that probably doesn't need an introduction, uh, has a mobile game called Galaxy Heroes. So when they first launched this game, they saw that they were getting quite a lot of store listing visitors, but not as many installs. So they wondered, is there any problem with the game? By looking at peer benchmarking data, they realized that the problem was not the game, but the category that the game was sitting in. It was different to categories that EA has launched before, and in general had a lower conversion rate than uh, these other categories. So that led EA to focus on category and start building specific unique assets for different gate categories and, and countries. So this completely changed the way that EA was considered the acquisition problem and let them focus in these dimensions to improve their growth strategies. So now if you're a games company like EA uh, or you have in-app purchases, you might be thinking that this is great and I'm going to look in these reports and try to improve my conversion rate. But what if you have an ad revenue? App, or if you have an app that uses subscriptions to, subscriptions to monetize. So the first m version of the user acquisition report was useful to everyone, but it was optimized for apps that have in-app purchases. There are many successful businesses, though, that rely on building long-term relationships with users. So today we are very excited to introduce to you the version <laughs> 2 of the funnel that is built especially for businesses with a very strong focus on user retention. Let me show you this report. So this report shows retention reports, re retention periods, which are a key metric for, evalu for evaluating uh, acquisition uh, channels. The metric displayed here is retain installers, which is the number of users that have your app still installed in at least one of their devices. So this is your retain installer base, and it represents the opportunity to grow 
these users to loyal users by either improving the utility or quality of your app or simply by uh, pushing in-app notifications or emails to them. So better yet, all of this information that I have shared with you, uh, buyer and install conversion, as well as the retained users and peer benchmarks are now exportable on a CSV uh, format to help you understand and track better your app's performance. So I know that after today, you'll go back to your app and you'll be able to see which channels are contributing the most valuable users, which countries are these users are coming from, and understand where opportunity exists to increase installer and buyer conversion, as well as grow your retained installer's base. So all of these new reports allow you to optimize not only on installs, but on long-term value and success. Regardless of the way you monetize, we now have an acquisition report that will help you grow your business. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Soon. Thank you. 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 Thank 각자가 중요하게 생각하시는 지표들도 다 다를 거라고 생각합니다. 그래서 저희가 대시보드를 제공하긴 하지만 많은 경우 직접 저희 콘솔에서 CSV 파일 형태로 다운로드를 받으셔서 따로 분석하는 걸로 알고 있습니다. 왜냐하면 예를 들어서 작년 추석 연휴에 했던 프로모션과 이제 올해 했던 프로모션을 비교한다거나 아니면 크래쉬와 언니스톨 같은 두 가지 지표의 상관관계를 비교할 때 저희가 지금 제공해드리는 대시보드로는 약간 어려움이 있었거든요. 자 여기서 혹시 아실지는 모르겠지만 예전 통계 페이지에 대해서 한번 생각을 해보겠습니다. 여러 가지 단점들이 있었죠. 먼저 데이터의 로딩 속도가 굉장히 느렸고 어, 데이터를 추출할 수 있는 기간 옵션들이 되게 한정적이었고 그 다음에 두개 이상의 지표를 선택해서 비교할 수도 없었습니다. 그리고 데이터를 리프레시하는 주기나 그 앞서 계속 얘기했었던 그랜뉴얼리티 데이터의 촘촘함의 정도, 정도도 불만족스러웠습니다. 그래서 저희가 여러분들의 피드백을 적극 수용해서 이번 아이오를 기점으로 통계 대시보드에 대해서 대규모 업데이트를 진행했고 어, 저는 새롭게 바뀐 통계 대시보드에 대해서 여러분들께 소개 드리려고 합니다. 자, 이미 확인하신 분도 있겠지만 이렇게 바뀌었습니다. 싹 바뀌었어요. 그 저희 디자인 팀이 머티리얼 디자인 가이드라인을 맞추어서 처음부터 완전히 새로 디자인했고 어, 페이지에 레비뉴, 인스톨, 업데이트와 언인스톨 이벤트와 같은 새로운 지표들도 추가됐습니다. 이 지표들은 톰이 앞서 발표한 릴리즈 대시보드에서도 확인할 수가 있는 지표들이고요. 어, 먼저 보시면 되게 당연한 기능인데 여러분들이 원하는 기간을 선택해서 데이터를 추출하실 수 있게 되었습니다. 지금까지는 현재 항, 항상 오늘 시점을 기준으로 어, 데이터가 끝나는 세 가지 옵션만 제공을 했었는데 이제는 커스텀 기능이 제공이 되고요. 예를 들어서 이제는 작년 4분기의 데이터나 올해 1월의 데이터를 따로 추출하실 수 있었, 있습니다. 또한 여러분들이 데이터 추출 기간을 설정을 하시면 새로 업데이트된 통계 대시보드는 여러분들이 아무것도 하지 않아도 자동적으로 기본으로 동일 직전 기간에 대한 기, 그래프를 점선으로 그려줍니다. 이게 그 예시인데요. 예를 들어 여러분들이 지난주에 통계를 보고 싶어서 설정을 하셨으면 보시는 것처럼 직전주의 수치가 점선 그래프로 표시가 됩니다. 그리고 여러분들이 커서를 위로 이렇게 올려다 놓으시면 특정 날짜의 자세한 데이터가 표시가 되고 직전 비, 기간에 비해서 현재의 데이터가 증가했는지 감소했는지 이 수치를 퍼센트로 확인하실 수가 있습니다. 어, 저희의 얼리 액세스 파트너였던 익스피디아의 사례를 보면 저희 이 새롭게 제, 제공된 플레이 콘솔 대시보드를 통해서 연간 비교나 분기 비교를 좀 쉽게 할수 있어서 분석의 효율성을 증대시킬 수 있었습니다. 어, 그리고 또 다른 기능은 두 가지 지표를 동시에 비교하는 기능입니다. 어떻게 보면 어, 당연히 기대되는 기능인데 적용되기까지 좀 오래 걸렸죠. 이, 이 기능은 통계 대시보드 상단에 있는 Configure Report 버튼을 클릭하면 확인하실 수가 있습니다. 이를 통해서 어, 서로 다른 두 지표, 예를 들면 인스톨과 매출 또는 크래쉬와 평점의 상관관계를 굉장히 쉽게 확인하실 수 있게 되었습니다. 어, 차트를 보면 선택한 두 가지 지표가 서로 다른 색깔로 그래프가 그려지고 이 화면에도 앞서 보셨던 것처럼 직전 동일 기간에 대한 비교 그래프가 자동으로 그려집니다. 점선으로요. 그래서 세부 데이터를 확인하시려면 커서를 위로 가져가시면 되고 
어, 리얼터닷컴이라는 미국의 아파트 주체, 주택 검색 앱도 저희의 얼리 액세스 파트너였는데요. 어, 저희가 새롭게 제공하는 기능을 통해서 크래쉬와 언인스톨률의 상관관계를 파악할 수 있었고 앱 퀄리티가 유저들한테 미치는 영향을 정량적으로 확인할 수 있어서 서비스를 개선할 수 있었습니다. 여기 계신 여러분들도 새로운 기능을 업데이트하는 과정에서 여러 기술적 이슈들을 맞닥뜨리실 텐데 저희가 제공해 드리는, 드리는 툴을 통해서 정량적인 데이터를 확인할 수 있으면 우선순위 설정에 도움이 되리라 기대하고 있습니다. 어, 또한 저희가 추가적으로 제공해 드리는 지표들 중에 인스톨 업데이트, 언인스톨 이벤트와 같은 지표들은 하루 단위가 아니라 매 시간, 단위, 매 시간 단위로 데이터를 확인하실 수 있게 되었고 슬라이드에서 보시는 것처럼 어, 시간별 트렌드를 확인하실 수 있습니다. 이를 통해서 그동안 불가능했던 더 세밀한 분석 예를 들어 여러분들이 오프라인 이벤트를 진행했거나 TV 광고를 돌리셨을 경우 이 캠페인이 여러분들의 서비스의 매출이나 인솔에 미치는 영향력을 확인하실 수 있게 되었습니다. 어, 이제는 제가 소개할 마지막 기능인데요. 어, 예전에는 국가 또는 기기 옵션으로 필터를 걸었을 때 상위 10개 옵션만 보여줬고 더 자세히 알고 싶었으면 더 자세히 데이터를 보려고 하면 CSV 파일을 다운로드 받았어야 됐는데 이제는 전체를 보여주기도 하고 여러분들이 통계를 더 쉽게 확인하실 수 있도록 검색 옵션도 제공하고 있습니다. 이 그래프가 지금까지 제가 얘기했던 추가 기능들의 종합 선물 세트라고 할수 있는데요. 원하시는 기간을 선택하시고 그, 그 기간에 대해서 복수의 지표에 대해서 시간별 데이터를 국가나 특정 국가나 특정 기기별로 확인하실 수가 있습니다. 어, 지금까지 말씀드렸던 제 파트의 내용을 한번 요약해보면 새로운 통계 페이지는 여러분들이 플레이 콘솔에서 확인하실 수 있는 데이터를 효율적으로 분석할 수 있게 도와주는 정말 강력하고 다재다능한 툴로 탈바꿈했고 어, 이번 업데이트를 통해서 매출 인스톨, 업데이트, 언인스톨 같은 이벤트들은 시간당 데이터를 확인하실 수도 있고 그 다음에 기존에 제공되는 데이터들도 지, 예전보다 훨씬 더 낮은 레이턴시를 통해서 그 데이터를 확인하실 수가 있게 되었습니다. 따라서 오늘 꼭 돌아가셔서 통계 페이지를 한번 확인하신 다음에 데이터를 확인하시고 서비스를 개선하시는 데 도움이 되면 정말 좋겠습니다. 이제 오늘 전체 세션의 마지막 슬라이드인데요. 어, 오늘 수고해준 탐과 니코스한테 박수 한번 부탁드립니다. 네. 감사합니다. 오늘 들으신 30분에 걸친 세션을 정리해보면 크게 세 가지 파트였죠. 먼저 릴리즈 대시보드를 통해서 여러분들의 새로운 릴리즈가 얼마나 안정적으로 진행되고 있는지 데이터를 확인하실 수가 있고 두 번째로 유저 획득 보고서를 통해서 여러분들이 사용하고 계시는 마케팅 채널의 효율성을 검증할 수 있게 되었습니다. 그리고 마지막으로 새로운 통계 페이지를 통해서 어, 저희가 제공해드리는 데이터를 정말 여러분의 입맛대로 유연하게 사용하실 수 있게 되었습니다. 어, 이 모든 기능들을 통해서 저희 구글 플레이 콘솔에서 제공하는 데이터가 어, 여러분들의 비즈니스를 성장시킬 수 있도록 열일하게 된것 같아서 개인적으로 정말 기쁘고 저희의 원제 자체가 그 메이킹 데이터 워크 포 유거든요. 그래서 이 데이터가 여러분들을 일을 할수 있게 저희가 그 바탕을 깔아놓은 것 같아서 개인적으로 정말 기쁩니다. 네, 지금 이 순간에도 여러분들에게 더 나은 데이터를 제공하기 위해서 저희 팀 전체가 노력을 하고 있으니까 앞으로도 계속 관심 있게 지켜봐 주시면 감사하겠습니다. 네, 여기서 발표를 마치도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다.